All right, uh, we're going to move on to our community spotlight uh, with Bogdan Volodarsky. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. Feel free to uh, correct me. Um, did I did I get it, Bogdan? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So the, the title uh, "Monitoring Data Quality in a Data Lake Using Great Expectations Serverless." So uh, I'll let you. You should be able to share, and I can let you uh, take it away. Yeah. Okay. First of all, uh, very appreciate for this uh, great opportunity to present our experience uh, with great expectation integration. And uh, my name is yeah, Bogdan Volodarsky. Uh, now I'm data quality engineer at Provectus. And a uh, few words about my company. Uh, Provectus is a uh, consulting company on AI and ML solutions, cloud migration, and data lake sphere. Uh, so that means that we know something about data and data quality for us uh, is a no last word. Um, someone could already see my article on Tor Data Science, and today I'd like to describe our experience uh, in the great expectation integration and data quality approach. Uh, and the plan of my presentation you can see on the screen. Uh, also, together with me, my college, Alexei Chumagin, he's my engineering manager and our data quality product owner. Uh, he will help me on a Q&A session. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, our first goal uh, in data quality was to choose the most applicable open source tool uh, for our project. Uh, and we made uh, some corporation table uh, with the most famous library uh, on the market. Uh, as you can see on the green cells count, uh, great expectation is far ahead. And on the first stage, we also tried to use uh, DQ tool, but the critical point for us was that great expectation has a, how I, so the, uh, beauty reports and uh, functional also still grows, not only fixing and development not stopped. Uh, so we decided to use a great expectation and our data pipelines and how can you all understand otherwise what I should do here. So uh, how we write tests uh, when we need to develop some approach to data quality uh, and how to write data suits from scratch. Uh, so first one, uh, we find uh, a guy who are responsible for a necessary data source and you need to download uh, some sample of this data source file uh, then make uh, some discovery and prepare a question after that starts the most important and complicated step uh, you need to find out some criteria uh, to understand the data uh, bad or good and finally, you can write a test. Uh, we do it in uh, such that way. Uh, we divided um, our test suite on two. Uh, first is a technical and second is a business test suite. Uh, we divide it in that way. And let's take some example. Um, let's take a column date. Uh, I think in all data source, almost all data source have it. Um, and uh, we used, for example, technical asserts for this, um, yeah, for this except column values to be data till parsable uh, because we know that on this column, we always need uh, to have type date, yeah? Uh, but what format will check, uh, expect column values to match straight time format and etc. Uh, in a business suit, uh, in that way, uh, we should work. Uh, Technics about types, nulls, and simple technical restriction. And business, it's about formats and logical restriction. So on the screen, how we divided uh, some examples here: technic and business. You can see. Uh, Next, I need to introduce some uh, description, short description of the project. Um, we see uh, some architecture. Uh, we have a data lake uh, with you no know, homogenic data sources. Uh, it's all built on uh, step functions. 
all files uh, located on uh, S3 and uh, parquet format. Uh, we don't have any streaming, uh, only batching, and uh, we need uh, to test only new DAX runs, uh, which are scheduled uh, once a week. And as requirements, uh, we need to use uh, QuickSight to visualize some reports and some BL, BI stars. Uh, yeah, uh, and task received, and let's try uh, to solve it. First of all, uh, we retrieve data from data sources using Lambda and GLU. Uh, then uh, in parallel, we run uh, Lambda with Pandas profiling uh, and grade expectation test suite for each data sets and store and serve uh, each as a static uh, S3, S3 websites. Um, next, uh, in Lambda, we convert uh, here. Yeah. Uh, we convert uh, grid expectation results to Allure. Uh, about Allure and why we use it, I will tell a little bit later. Uh, also, we store all data and serve on S3. Uh, next, we also use Lambda to uh, generate these uh, reports and then push data to pivot table in on a dynamo db but also guys you can use um, uh, s3 to cost reduce uh, but we use uh, dynamo because it's in our stack and uh, the last is a quick site uh, which uh, crawl the data from dynamo db by amazon afina uh, and visualize it uh, yeah uh, here how the data pipeline looks like. Uh, we also, I need to notice that we use Lambda because uh, size of our files not so big. I think two, at maximum two, five megabytes. Uh, and also our profiling can test suits execution step uh, at max, uh, something about five minutes. So Lambda is very applicable for this situation. Uh, yeah, S um, a little bit about some technical stuff and how we did it and how you can uh, reproduce on your project. So first of all, uh, we export suits from Jupyter to Python uh, and change some paths. Uh, why? Because uh, I think Python files more applicable to production and uh, uh, you can store simply in a github and change and to make a version control uh, so next uh, you need to change config for grid expectation i mean you need to change it to s3 location it's uh, not simple for first time i think uh, next you need to upload the grid expectation folder to s3 to store your configuration and expectations also uh, it's necessary to use a handler, Lambda handler in your code because uh, Lambda only work in that way in Amazon uh, AWS cloud. Uh, so also we create a Docker file and requirements txt uh, for purposes that uh, all our code is too big to use uh, in a scratch in a Lambda. Uh, to this, you can uh, create ECR in AWS, upload your Docker image and create uh, AWS Lambda based on this Docker image. Um, for which purposes? First of all, it's manual way how to deploy it. And second, it's an easy way to debug your pipeline. And uh, we use some automation way also we use for this purpose a serverless framework to deploy it easy and fast on the screen you can see uh, serverless uh, yaml file for deploying this is only about great expectation steps just run in parallel yeah uh, how it looks like our grid expectation portal, which uh, served on S3. Uh, we a little bit customize this. Uh, we shown uh, 
pass to the file, not only file name, uh, to understand some versioning things. Also, this house look like uh, pandas profiling, and also I need to uh, say a, a couple of words about that. Second. Uh, why we use pandas profiling um, instead uh, great expectation profiling uh, we have uh, two points of this we made uh, some a b testing for our data analyst between to this opportunity um, and in some ways they like more pandas profiling i don't know why uh, and uh, for development purposes why also we use because uh, Pandas profiling uh, allows us to create easy configurable test suits on fly, uh, what we thought uh, to use on this project, but unfortunately it turned out to be unnecessary, but we, we will uh, use this option to the next implementation of our project. Uh, and again, about Allure, uh, why we use Allure instead of great expectation reports, uh, we don't use instead. We use the boss. Uh, Allure is a popular open source test report tool uh, from usual IT and testing, uh, which is very simple and familiar for managers. Uh, and great expectation reports we use for technical employees to understand problems, but Allure uh, we use for managers to understand the situation on project. Uh, also, we integrated Allure with GitLab issues uh, to easy creation bug. Uh, in Allure um, report, I have some link to the GitLab issues. Uh, and a quick site, site uh, we have uh, some bug trend uh, dashboards and which show percentage of failed tests, maybe per date, data source or data suits. Uh, it's a very uh, good option for manager staff uh, to understand also situation of the project and see maybe uh, data lifting. Uh, also, we have some status dashboards. It's just about uh, how many test execution was per day. And the last but not the least, it's a pivot table. Uh, this is short description for our tests. Uh, and by clicking on the cell, you can go to the all reports by this cell, I mean, maybe date or something else. Uh, and it's a pandas profile and great expectation and a new report. Uh, and it's a conclusion. Yeah, I want to say what we have after this integration, uh, great expectation and other tools here. Uh, we now have uh, some data metrics on a uh, project. Uh, we have uh, very fast profiling and tests. Uh, also have understandable reports helps for, for each purpose helps to get expectation and allure. No any trash notification. We have some also uh, slack notification after test execution and quality trend via dashboards and on quick site. And now it's uh, not a final of for us, uh, we now uh, implement some um, data quality framework. Uh, we call it Fast Data QA for um, AWS. It's uh, made by Terraform scripts to deploy. Uh, we create uh, by Lambda and step functions on site pipelines. So we're not integrated uh, in a customer pipeline, we just on site, yeah, uh, we create tests uh, by pandas profiling on fly. Uh, we little bit customize it. Uh, also, all files stored on S3 and inputs uh, for us it's uh, parquet files on a data lakes. And uh, for visualize we and dashboarding, how I said, we use Allure and QuickSight. Uh, yeah, and at the conclusion, also I want to share with you some articles and approach tools, uh, what we did uh, and how we use great expectation in Provectus. Uh, first, it's our adapter from great expectation to Allure results. 
to uh, configure um, additional reports for your pipelines. Second, also Proactus uh, contributed uh, to Kubeflow component for great expectation, and you can use it on it. Um, and second, uh, just know that we tried to uh, make some integration between SageMaker and Great Expectation. Uh, you can see uh, architecture on the screen. Yeah, that's all, and I write it to the questions. If anybody Thanks, oh, that, that was awesome. That is very cool. <laughs> Uh, a qu question. So we did, we do get quite a lot of questions about um, deploying great expectations on Lambda. Uh, how easy how how easy was it to deploy on Lambda? Um, it was for first time. It was not was easy. I think I tried it for months, uh, but now we have some approach. I also described it on an article. Yeah, and now it's not not too, not tough. Yeah, so you just need to create a Docker image, deploy it to ACR, and maybe uh, type some scripts, and it's uh, working very good, actually. And how I said, it's very fast on working on them. That that's really cool. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully, your article can become a really good. Uh... Kind of tutorial for people that want to do the same thing that's that's yeah awesome. and uh, it will be it will be more easy when we uh, uh, convert our solution to terraform mm -hmm. uh, it, it is going to pretty much easy yeah and uh, we are going to publish uh, article about how we trans how we convert our solution to terraform oh, that is, that's, that's amazing cool yeah yeah awesome yeah, i'll be looking forward to that this is getting way in the weeds, but is Terraform's Lambda coverage good now? I, I haven't looked at it in maybe a year and a half, two years, something like that. And when I looked at it originally, there were a fair number of things that operations that were difficult to do in Lambda through Terraform. But has that changed? Mm, I think yes, but uh, with us working some DevOps team, uh, which help us. Got it, cool. Uh, anyone else have any other questions? Well, let's make sure we didn't miss any in the chat. Yeah. Uh, also, guys, I share uh, links to articles in in Slack chat. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, in Zoom chat. In Zoom chat, uh, please uh, save these uh, links uh, if if you need it. I'm definitely saving those now. Uh, Bogdan, what's that mug that you have? Looks pretty interesting. I'm I'm sort of a mug guy. <laughs> Uh, it's a pig. Oh. oh, it's a pig. <laughs> it's a square pig. Yeah, I made it by my hand. That's a good one. <laughs> and it's little feet too. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for taking time to the presentation. I really look forward to that next article. Um, we'll definitely include it in our in our newsletter and when we uh, sort of blast out uh, community articles. And anyone else here, you know, if you want to do one of these presentations, feel free to contact me on uh, Slack or Kyle at superconductive.com. Uh, um, yeah, so thanks so much for everyone that came and uh, keep an eye out for the roundup that I'll, I'll post uh, inside of our Slack and our newsletter. All right. Thanks, everyone. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.